Hi everyone, how are you doing? Today I am going to show you how to paint the roof on my um, little enchanted florist from my North Star Village series. Um, I had done the roof as little rustic tiles and got a nice little ombre um, look to them. And it is a really kind of simple process, um, but it took me about three or four tries to get down to something that I like to do. And I had asked on my Facebook group if you wanted to watch me do it. And you voted yes. So here we go. We're going to try to keep the video as simple as we can. So what I did is I prepped a little piece here, an extra piece. And I painted the roof with an underlying dark color which in this case, I use deco art paints, it's soft black. And what I'm gonna do to put the lines in and how I think I'm gonna have it on the pattern is I found it much easier than using tracing paper to use either a General's charcoal paint pencil in white, which is like a chalk pencil, or a water soluble dressmaking pencil that you get at the sewing department because you can add in lines and they come off with water very easily and they're very nice for doing details like this and now I am just gonna um, trace the main line on the, the idea here is to just press very lightly here I'll go from this way even though here that's better because I am right-handed and I think the pattern lines will be out like that they're just going to be the lines going across because I don't want you to have to trace everything and smudge it there's my sticker for my center so I stay centered here so this is really going to be what the pattern is and the rest is going to be free-handed okay and once again you press very lightly on this you can use tracing paper if you want but I like the pencils I think that works really well for me and what I am gonna do excuse my hands this is my um my wet palette and I'm gonna use a light color here is cobblestone from DecoArt and that's gonna um, do the main lines of all the little tiles okay and this is my clean water I always keep a little cup like this in my right on my palette and I have a big water off camera for when I truly rinse my brush but then I can dump I could um, brush it dip it in there and um, the water is always clean for floating because this is what we're gonna do now the brush I'm gonna use is by silver and it's called a ruby satin and I like it because it's a little bit of a stiffer bristle. We're going to be working on the chisel edge mostly. You'll see in a minute. Um, the other two of the silver lines that I use are the Golden Natural. That's a very soft bristle, and that's nice for very soft floats and shades. And then the um, Silver Silk is a nice in-between so I like these three lines. I use them all pretty much in most of my designs. You don't have to buy them all, of course. If you're going to buy only one, maybe buy the um, the Silver Silk 88s because it's an in-between brush. It's, it's absorbent, yet it's firm enough for most like chisel edge work. But um, I like the Ruby Satins. They're almost like a fabric brush and they really keep their edge nice for like workhorse stuff. So what I'm going to do is pick up a little paint on the tip like normal float shading. I'm not going to show you how to float shade. I'm going to assume you know that. And then I'm going to go on the chisel edge and start pulling down. We're going to work from the bottom up and I'm going to start pulling down tiles. so we're in the middle I'll get you I'm getting it 
And the first one may look a little wonky, but that's okay. And you keep picking up the paint on the edge. And then you, you just wiggle the bottom and pull up almost to that edge there. Okay. And what you're doing is you're creating the frame of the tile. And we want these to look rustic. They don't all have to be the same, you know, width exactly. You know, that's why I want you to eyeball it. The wiggles can be a little different. I don't want you to have to transfer all that. You're going to just come down where the previous one is and then kind of wiggle and pull up. You don't have to go completely to the bottom. You can see on the bigger one here, there was a little space here and then I wound up shading the eaves with the green this way so it all blended in really nice and what you do you pick up on the corner take off the extra excess water and you go across now see if it gets thick like that just thin it out with the heel of the brush of course it's weird because I'm on camera but as you get going, you, you kind of get the hang of it, I hope. It's not all one stroke, usually. And what I did even is, after this kind of dried, I went back and pulled up little edges like that. It's a very loose, easy stroke. Okay? And we'll go all the way across and because I want to keep this short oh I was gonna not go because I gotta let this dry before the next step I'll go quick so it might not look perfect but we don't want it perfect see as you get going you go pretty fast and this is why I like to paint things a couple times See, that one came out wonky, so you just cover it over. And you could always, if you really hate something, you could go over it with the base color, which is the soft black. This is why I guess I like to show you is because you see that it's, it's a very forgiving process. See, that's way too much paint. That, and then you just kind of end it. in this okay now this is dry and we have these little tails that kind of went up to the second level and we want this to fade under the next level so what I am doing which I thought I had on my palette is taking the base color which is a soft black in this case And I'm going to take my brush. I have to move this so I can stay in the middle. And I am going to float shade right under that next line. Now you see how that makes that fade up into the next level. So you take I'm using a quarter inch shader that's my favorite you could use any size you like so you're going to kind of follow the bottom of that line and float shade across and you could see it looks like a layer of shingles all the way across okay now we're going to let that dry again. Put it on there and let it dry. Okay, now we're ready for our second layer of shingles. We're going to go back to the cobblestone color, the light color, and we're going to start to um, float that in. 
the same way. It's kind of tricky on these little edges, but don't worry about it because nobody will see it. You'll probably put snow there anyway. And what we're going to do is offset the shingles this time. So we kind of want it to go like you would do a shingle a roof. Like there's the edge there, so we're going to go in between. And again, it does not have to be perfect. That's why I don't want to put lines in for you. And as we're pulling this, you could see the chalk pencil that we had put on initially is erasing. You don't see it really. And you won't see it by the time we're done. So we're going to keep kind of wiggling this across. Now see the charcoal pencil I showed you in the demo, and that tends to look a little stronger than the dressmaker's water-soluble pencil. So you might be better off with the um, dressmaker one, but really they both work because what you can do, like if you see, like here there's a little underneath, which you won't see, um, but when this is dry, when the second layer is dry, I wouldn't worry about it now, but once that second layer dries up, you can go back with a wet brush that's a little bit firmer, like this brush that I'm using, and you could kind of just scrub it off, and it goes. So see how your second layer builds right on top of the first. Now this looks really stark, but that's how it's supposed to right now. Okay, and go over them and define them how you want. Just a wiggle. You could pull these little lines in. And see there is really, you're, you're never going to notice the line there. You don't have to do anything. So we're going to let that dry. And we're going to continue. The next thing we'll do with the dark will float like we did before this. And then layer, layer, layer. Okay? So you don't need to me watch me do it um, three more times, but I'll do it off camera. And then I'll show you the last step and we'll be done. Okay? Okay, we're back and everything, all the little shingles are done. When you get to this point, and see you can keep going, you can do as big as you want. Um, of course, I just made larger shingles on the bigger piece. Um, it's all a matter of eyeballing it, so I think it's pretty self-explanatory. So when you get to this point then, all I did was shade around the edges and on my piece um, for the village I had the chimney a different color so we're just going to kind of skip over that and because there is snow up on the roof there too it'll really make it I was going to put a little line is like a peak but it doesn't matter because there's going to be snow up there anyway but if you were doing a summer house um you would want to finish it off maybe with a little a little line maybe you know just off set a little bit like that okay so we're at that point now the next thing i am going to show you is how to get this pretty little ombre effect and what I did for this is on my palette I put um, I think this was raw sienna and this is asphaltum again deco art paints and asphaltum is a nice transparent paint and raw sienna is a nice warm color and you could use um, a deer foot brush or a softer deer foot. You don't want to use like a stencil brush. I like these dome shaders. They're nice. Um, 
there's a nice, here's a, this is a dynasty, I think it's a dome or a deer foot. It might be a softer deer foot. Um, I used to like the Low Cornell 400 series of deer foots for um, stippling in that, but something like this. And what I did, I guess I'll try to do it on camera. How's that? Is I'm going to go in my water and blot. And I'm going to make kind of a wash. And I'll start with the raw sienna first. And then just randomly kind of spread it around and go right over everything. And you'll see it'll look a little darker now, but it dries nice and you could add more layers. Don't, don't get crazy. This only takes a second to do. You don't want to cover everything up and put a solid coat. You want the roof to kind of show through. And then maybe put a little bit of the light color. See, that's too thick. You don't want to do that. There you go. I didn't put much light on it. But you might want to brush here and there. I guess just a little. And then the asphalt them too because, as I said, that's a very thin color. But it's a little bit darker brown, so it'll give a different shading color to it. And just kind of random push it around. Now, of course, if you have your house done, you want to be more careful at the edge than I was here. And be sure to leave some of the regular parts show through, too. Okay? And then by the time you dry it, it will look like that. So that is it. It's very simple, easy to do, and quick. So I guess it was worth me doing it a few times to get it down right. Um, that's why I like to paint things a couple times before I teach them in a pattern. And this will be the finished florist, and it'll have the little um, topiary overlays and the swan overlay. And I am going to offer an ornament set with this um, not with it, but as a separate part of it, they, it for those of you who might not want to paint the shops or might want to um, decorate a wreath or your tree with the highlighted pieces, um, the ornament kit in this um, for the floor shop is going to have the swan, the two topiaries, the deer, the owl, and the lantern so it'll make a nice set of six ornaments so that'll be fun and you can give them away as gifts or gift tags or whatever so the pattern will be coming soon if it's not already there um, I'm gonna put this video up on YouTube so hopefully it'll be there by the beginning of June 2020 and I'm gonna keep doing the um, shops as quickly as I can but I want them to be done as nicely as I can and um, the next shop up will be the bakery so that'll be a lot of fun too I didn't give it a name yet but I will and thank you for um, supporting me and following me and come join our Facebook group I'll put the link below and you could see me creating all the time okay if Put your comments and whatever suggestions on the bottom there, and I'll be happy to answer you. Have fun. Bye-bye.